This program was brought to you by PennyMac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. With the people, products, and technology to take you there, it's why they say, at PennyMac, greatness lives here. Welcome to The Interest. I'm Mike Savino. The old saying goes, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, now the SEC wants to see if there's any fire to the lawsuit filed by a former Better.com executive against the company. Specifically, the SEC is wondering whether Better misled its investors. Aurora Acquisitions, which is currently in a merger deal with Better, disclosed the investigation Wednesday in an amendment to a registration statement, saying each company received a request for documents as part of the investigation. Aurora also disclosed that as the investigation is ongoing, neither Better nor Aurora are able to predict how long it will continue or whether, at its conclusion, the SEC will bring an enforcement action against either of them, and if it does, what remedies the SEC will seek. The SEC wants documents related to certain aspects of Better's business, matters related to Better founder and CEO Vishal Garg and his other business, and other related party transactions. The SEC is also looking into allegations made by former Vice President Sarah J. Pierce, who sued the company last month. She claimed she was terminated in retaliation for raising concerns that the company had violated securities laws and misled investors. Zillow is also fighting back against claims that it misled investors, asking a judge to dismiss a class action lawsuit. The lawsuit, filed late last year, claims Zillow made false and misleading statements, failed to disclose risks, and cause investors to suffer significant losses and damages with the iBuying venture Zillow offers. The investors say that when the company announced it was pausing Zillow offers, Class A, class a and Class C stocks both fell by 10%. And when Zillow announced it was ending the program altogether, along with 25% reduction in workforce, stocks fell by another quarter. The investors claim that Zillow failed to disclose the risks of the iBuying venture when the program launched in 2018. But in its dismissal request, Zillow denied those allegations. The company also says that the security laws do not protect investors from downturns, and the laws are also not insurance for investors who incur losses. In other news, a group of Republicans want the FHFA to up its oversight of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. A group of 10 members of Congress say that the government-sponsored enterprises are undercapitalized and they're putting the overall housing finance system at risk. The lawmakers specifically warn that the enterprisers have a history of venturing into new activities and product offerings that go well beyond their congressional approved rules in the secondary market. They go on to say that the FHFA must ensure transparency with any new products or activities that the enterprises undertake and that these activities do not displace private firms or crowd out private capital. The letter was sent earlier this month to FHFA Director Sandra L. Thompson asking her to finalize rules on prior approval of enterprise products. The Housing and Economic Recovery Act of 2008 required these rules, and a proposal has been waiting for approval since October of 2020. Neither the FHFA nor Thompson has responded to our own request for comment. Two of the Republican signees asked Thompson to testify last month as part of a committee hearing on the housing market. The two congressmen expressed similar concerns about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in that letter, noting that the two enterprises combined to guarantee roughly half of the outstanding single-family mortgage debt in the United States. And finally, housing stock was up 2% in June. This is the first annual increase in nearly three years as home buying becomes less affordable. Home sales fell 16% from last year. It's the largest drop since March of 2020. And the country's economic woes have already cooled the housing market and they're likely to continue dampening demand. The rebound in inventory is also affecting prices, which grew by 11% year over year. While that seems sizable, that's the slowest pace in two years. This program was brought to you by PennyMac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. For more on these and all of today's top stories, go to mortgagenewsnetwork.com.